Hello everybody, I'd like to give you another short update of the progress working with the Quadratron board. I have enhanced now the controller board, which I will um, enhance even further for various options. So what I have done here, okay, that is now a plug on board, but I will build a, a standalone controller board which will have a general functionality for any driving requirement. So here in this example, I use just only a, a, a day modulator, which is the opposite of a multiplexer. So the multiplexer is using one signal and it's creating um, copy signals output. And here that is doing exactly the same. Here I have one signal coming in and he's splitting the signal in two different um, signal outputs. There's another thing I want to want to tell you. So the Quadratron board um, on its own is version one. Quadratron version 3, as on the website, as you can see, there's also the version 4, which is a much more modular system, which does not have a black and co co a contact um, anymore, but it has still the 10 pin CPU interface, which is very good. It also has chamber um, sections here for the dio diodes um, at the end, which is important depending on usage. I use them in here, but I'd have disconnected them, if you can see that, because they are actually um, disturbing the standard configuration and they're not working with it. So that has to come at a later stage to show how they can work. One thing comes to mind, some people talking about diode plug. Maybe that's the case here, you will see. Another thing I need to mention here, the board as it is, is too small here with a distance between the um, IGPTs or switches. So if I want to use a larger heatsink like this one, I wouldn't be able to do that because that would already touch the other side. Or one of the more professional ones from Germany is a clip-on chip with this one. So that would be just maybe just be in that act in that area. However, as you know, that the heating area here is live. So they are not allowed to touch each other. So that is a hazard. So there need to be more distance in between to allow that um, for, for the heating requirement. Now let's move on and show you how that signal looks on the signal generator. So in the running state you would not notice any difference to see all the signals. We have here on the top line we have the signal coming from the signal generator. And we have here the channel 1 and channel 2. However, when I stop it for the moment you will see in the meeting. Please ignore at the moment all these errors. It's because my um, signal probes are only connected on the maintenance port and there's a lot of loose connectivity and that's causing these problems here. So in the runtime you would not see that they go up and down because that's too fast. It would capture it at, at every moment. So in the runtime it looks like that. So one of the problems you see here when we take the frequency, let me show it again. So for each cycle you have only one side of the channel is actually um, initiated. That means every second cycle the same channel gets a signal. Same for the other side. What does that mean? That means let's just say you have a single chip IGPD and you have your tuning frequency is 100 kilohertz and you know that. So if you use this kind of technology you would have to use 200 kilohertz to adjust for that in order to provide a 100 kilohertz signal. Also, another problem, you see the large gaps here in between. That's when nothing happens. So you need to compensate for that. That means your duty cycle has to be much higher than 50% because you share both channels with the same duty cycle. Let me show that to you. So that is a normal state. Let me go to duty cycle. At the moment it's at 40%. Let me go up with the duty cycle. And at some point you overlap. Let's have a look here. Like that. Then you have a small gap. That is at the moment a maximum of 90%. That, that is the ideal. That put, that's the equivalent of 45% duty cycle. And you see the small gaps here in between. These small gaps here is the gaps where there is no overlap. And that's where the signal is actually then shifting over from one channel to the other channel not having any crossover, that means there will not be any short circuit. That's very, very important. So this is the one you, we are looking for. And this demo board has um, a, a fantastic performance. 
and it is very safe. You don't need to risk any kind of short circuits between your, your IGBTs and you will not damage them, so that's a good thing. However, one of the other things I need to make you aware is the Stimux board or the DIM modulator is capable to handle 50 MHz. However, in order to do that, a very careful design has to take place for shielding and so on to avoid cross reference shoot over and so on. I'm at the moment only at 40 kilohertz. Let's go up a little bit. Down. Let's get a duty cycle down to um, let's say 50 percent. That means we have we have 25 percent on each side. Now let me go up in the frequency 40 kilohertz. Um, that's 104. That's 200. Let me go out. 200 kilohertz, 400 kilohertz. Bear in mind, the circuit I did build is a quick and dirty circle with, with fly wires. Absolutely inefficient. It's not properly done, so I will get a lot of noise and a lot of problems here. However, it is not so obvious than in a system when it's running. So that's how it looks like at 400 kilohertz at the moment. Bear in mind that my um, probes are not connected properly. So there is probably a lot of um, um, noise uh, between the lines, even if they have, if I have, no, they're not grounded at the moment. No, the crowning has no impact in, at the moment. So it's definitely coming from the board, I believe. So that needs to be accounted for so we have a clean signal. Now let's move over to t show you how it performs. I'm um, at the moment here at uh, 295 kilohertz. I had before 328 retune the system and it appears to be only 295 296 kilohertz at the moment not like 168 I had before that's so a frequency I'm using at the moment um, let's say 12 13 volt and 90 milliampere as you can see it's quite a lot of output and you see a lot of disturbance here on the maintenance channel so that needs to be investigated and um, a lot of sh shoot throughs here on to the driver so that's not very not very good and a lot of ringing so that needs to be dealt with I can increase let's increase to 20 volt so at 16 15 volt the fluorescent bulb is illuminated upstairs so that means at 16 volt 100 milliampere it's 1.6 watt input the fluorescent bulb is lit completely and I have 332 watt peak to peak here and you see here very very beautiful let me put it over here the alignment between current and voltage so that is what we need to see that is a beautiful sine wave here for voltage and current absolutely usable as reactance power for any kind of high load low um, low resistance load put that back So I'm at 60, yeah, 60 volt, get 60 volt at the moment. Let's go a little bit up. Let's say 30 volt as we had it before. So at 30 volt, I'm at I'm at three. At three, yeah, 180 volts. At three watt, three dot five watt at the moment. Have to get that down here. Seven kilowatt already. And the duty cycle, please bear in mind, this duty cycle is low. So the duty cycle at the moment is at 70%, that means 35% on each side. Let me get up with the duty cycle without changing anything. I'm at 90%. Let's go down, 50%. A lot of shoot through. 60%, 70%, and that was 80%. So I keep it at 70%, that looks good, that's 35% per each channel. So that's 30 volt at the moment. And temperature, let me read the temperature here from the chips. 26 degree. At the moment here in my garage, we have a nice warm sunny day, it's about 22 degree outside. So we have for this power outage, why is a half bridge connectivity uh, system here, we have a very low um, loss of energy in form of heat which needs to be dissipated 
and I have very very little wattage in the moment. Um, just for the sake of argument, let's go to 50 volt. I'm at 40 volt at the moment. 40 volt, uh, it's about 8 watt. Coming in and go to 50 volt now. So I'm at 50 volt exactly at the moment. Um, set a third, set this about 15 watt at the moment in. 3.5 kilowatt, as you can see, and that is very, very nice. I don't want to, I think it's good enough to see it as a proof of concept. The fluorescent bulb is very, very brightly lit up here. So that concludes my test from the DMOX board, and more will come soon. Thank you.